I recently did a video and took a look at the Ender 2 Pro, and a lot of people commented that I should look at the King Rune KP3S. Well, here it is. So let's take a look at this, and then we'll compare it to this right here at Film a Friday. Film a Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. And here's a fully assembled King Rune KP3S. Well, actually not complete. It's missing the power supply, which is separate, and also the spool holder, which is separate, as shown here. The King Rune has a bigger build area compared to the Ender 2 Pro. It's 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters. I put the two beds on top of each other so you can see the difference. The KP3S comes mostly assembled, which is actually really nice. It also includes a linear rail on the X and also on the Y axis, but the Z axis still has wheels, just like the Ender 2. To assemble it, there's just two screws that connect the bottom portion to the top portion, and then you have to connect the coupling to the threaded rod and then to the Z stepper motor, and that should have been it, but then I noticed the whole cross member was loose, so I had to adjust the eccentric nut on the wheel in order to get that tight. Even the electrical connections were done. All I needed to do was connect the power supply to the base and then plug in the power supply. And this thing was ready to turn on. Before we do that, let's go a little deeper. It's got an all metal base and a metal cover with a fan. The control board has removable stepper drivers and an extra spot for an extra driver. It's got a 32-bit processor which is nice, but pretty standard now on most machines. And it's also got a BL touch connector up here in the corner of the board. The belt to move the bed back and forth was inside the cover here. But what I noticed, it's kind of loose. It was not tight. And worse, I couldn't find any way to adjust it to tighten it. There's no adjusters to tighten this belt, which is a little bit of a concern. The hot-ended extruder are a direct drive setup, and it looks like an E3D clone hot end, which is quite interesting. Now the filament cooling fan is one of the better ones, so this may affect print quality, may be better, but it is a single fan blowing through a duct. The power supply is actually 24 volts, 360 watts. That's quite a large power supply for such a small printer. The fans are a bit loud, as you can hear but no different than the Ender 2 Pro, so that's about the same. But this touch screen was hard to read in the bright light. I had to put my hand over it in order to see. And everything's so small, I couldn't even read the files. They all looked the same, so I had to press on them, and then it expands the name so I can see what it was. That was kind of a pain. Another thing that bothered me was the firmware. I wanted to use my E-Leveler, and it wouldn't recognize the M0 command. This thing just went corner to corner. I actually tried the M25 version I have for this. It wouldn't recognize that either. So to me, the firmware on this thing is not complete. Another reason why that's a pain is if you ever want to do multicolor using the plugins in Cura, they rely on the M0 or M25 pause command. So if the firmware isn't recognizing it, you can't use those plugins. That's why I say it's an incomplete firmware. The firmware does have a leveling menu. I mean, you click on that, now you can position at any point on the bed. It doesn't position exactly over the adjuster, but close enough so you can use the paper method to level your bed. Now, many people told me this is a better machine because it's got linear rails, and I've never really seen an advantage to it. And I remember that Michael Laws over at Teaching Tech did a great review of linear rails versus the wheels like we have here. And this was his conclusion. So are linear rails the magic bullet for improving print quality? Based on these results, I'd have to say no. If your machine is running well already, there's very little chance that you're going to get a big improvement from them. I'll link to Michael's video in the description below so you can watch the whole thing. I highly recommend it. I decided to do my own testing. So I'm going to test the Ender 2 Pro versus the King Rune KP3S with the exact same G-code files, exact same filament. The first test was this test print that was actually on the King Rune KP3S. It looks like a character from The Hobbit. So I used the exact same G-code on both machines and this is the result. If I look real close, I can see some gaps in the one on the KP3S. And when I look at the back, you can see some lines there. But other than that, these things appear identical. I printed a couple CHEP cubes at a 0.12 layer height. This camera is making them look really grainy, but to the naked eye, they look both identical and really good. Then I tried a couple taller and longer prints. 
Now these are both in vase mode or spiral mode in Cura. And I gotta tell you, these look fantastic. Neither one of them has gaps. They're very smooth. These are great prints. But again, about the same. I did try to print flexible. This direct drive handle it no problem. If it's really flexible stuff like Ninja Flex, it gets caught up in this. You need a different extruder. It's not the best for flexibles. So that is definitely advantage of the direct drive. But if someone asked me which machine I would recommend for say a friend or a family member, I would say this one. And it's really for several reasons. First of all, it comes with adjusters so I can tighten the belt. This one I know has a loose belt in the bed and I can't, I can't tighten it. I don't know how to tighten that thing up. Second, I do like the little drawer here or tools. This doesn't have that. Third, the display on this is really small and the fact that it's flat, a lot of reflection. So I like this display so much better and I can actually pop that display off and view it. Another thing I like is the spool holder is attached. It comes with a handle and power supply built in so I can just pick this up, store it away if I want. This one, I practically need a box to put everything in if I want to, you know, move it. And the firmware on this recognizes the M0 command so I can use my bed leveler. This firmware is just not complete. I know you can update the firmware, but out of the box, it's not complete. It doesn't recognize the M0 command, so I couldn't even use this except very manually, you know, adjusting thing, which is kind of a pain. So that's a huge advantage to me out of the box. So overall, I do still prefer this over this guy. Now, if you're a hacker and you want to, you know, print your own stuff, print your own power supply mount, print your own spool holder, maybe print your own handle, or go into electronics. It has the removable drivers, so you can easily replace one without having to replace a board you'd have to do in this. Then this is probably why some people like this. It's a really, it's a hacker's machine. But as far as print quality, they're the same. So I don't see linear rails really being a big factor. It's just direct drive versus Bowden. That's really the only difference. So I'd still go with this. Personally, I think this is a better package for the price than this, but hey, you choose. I'll put links to both these in the description below and vote that way. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.